Hey YouTubies, it's Amy. It's been a very long time since I have checked in with you guys and I'm very happy to be back. Um, sorry about the absence. Uh, I won't go into a long explanation other than to say that some things in my life got pretty overwhelming for a while, um, but uh, I think uh, mischief managed on those and, and things are looking up, so good things. And I'm glad to be back making videos for you guys. Uh, keep you posted on my progress and how everything's going um, and also my pursuit uh, of plastics, which at this point is uh, kind of my a little bit more of my focus um, at this juncture. So I'll keep you guys posted. Um, but let's see, uh, this is my weeks 41 through 64, which is just a huge gap. Sorry again. Uh, Post-op update. Uh, I had duodenal switch surgery with Dr. Paul Enox in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina on June 24th of 2015. My starting weight was 275 pounds. My weight um, on my surgery date was 260. Uh, I last came and checked in with you guys back in March at 175 pounds, and this week I weighed in at 163 pounds. So um, I'm about three pounds, I am exactly three pounds from where my surgeon ultimately wanted me to stop losing. Um, I haven't really been trying terribly hard uh, to keep losing at this point, primarily because I'm very happy with where I'm at and I'm pretty much focusing on uh, fitness and continued health, keeping the diabetes away and all that kind of good stuff. Um, that's much more important to me than, than uh, achieving that number, although that number will feel great uh, if and when uh, I get there. Um, I've been just slowly trickling down. I've been hovering and then trickling down and then hovering and then trickling down. Um, and I'm kind of just letting my body do its thing. Um, but I am monitoring and that is something that I will always do. I pretty much weigh every day. I just do a check-in, take the temperature, so to speak, make sure everything is going all right. Um, and if I see a prolonged uptick of any kind, I, I will make adjustments. It hasn't happened yet. I'm probably still in the honeymoon period, honestly, um, because life's been life's been busy, but uh, but uh, the the weight loss process has been pretty straightforward for me. I'll be honest. Um, uh, it's really allowed me to focus in on health and fitness, which has made me really feel very happy and very fortunate. Uh, so there's that. Um, so, uh, yeah, 163. Um, let's get to the fun business since I promised you guys a care package friggin' six months ago. Um, and I bought it. I had it ready. It's here. Um, I just uh, dropped the ball. So, um, my, my mom picked the winner from a bucket of names and we have, uh, chosen, uh, she has chosen uh, Hoo Hoo Tube. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You are the uh, winner of the prize. Um, what we have uh, put together, what I have put together so far, um, is a Fitbit Charge HR um, in large, which you can change out if you need a different size or you prefer a different color. Um, I've got some turkey perky jerky, and I've got a few other samples uh, of different things that I've found to be um, successful and enjoyable uh, as I've been, you know, trying to lose. So um, hopefully those serve you well, and it's something that you'll make use of. I know the Fitbit really motivated me. Uh, and uh, hopefully it does good things for you as well. Uh, so congratulations and uh, thanks for celebrating with me and thanks for your patience in waiting. Um, so that's it for prizes. Um, I, you guys were kind enough to ask a series of questions, which I think what I'll probably do is try to answer some of those. Um, ooh, it's hot as I'll get out here still. Um, still in the 90s in North Carolina, man. Dang. Uh, but uh, not as hot and sweaty as I used to get, so I guess that's an upgrade. Um, but uh, I'll be ready for fall. Halloween's my favorite time of year, so as I may have said last year, I don't recall, but it is, and uh, I'm looking forward to the cooler weather. Um, anyhow, so you guys were kind enough to ask some questions, and I want to get through those, um, but I know that that may take more than one video. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to do that. You guys have uh, definitely been patient enough to wait for, to, for multiple videos, so I'll definitely, uh, if I spread it across more than one, I'll get those out to you pretty quickly. Um, two seconds, I got a drink. Wada, wada, wada. Okay, so um, one tip I wanted to give you guys too, um, uh, and in fact, this is an answer to one of the questions I got, which was top tip for a newbie. Um, after you complete 
your basics of getting off of a liquid diet, a semi-solid diet, and onto regular food and are able to really take solid vitamins and not have too much trouble with that. I highly recommend a probiotic. That might be on uh, the table for some of your surgeons, um, and for some of your surgeons won't care about it and won't mention it, um, particularly when it comes to any malabsorption. Um, but regardless, actually, I think it's, it's, uh, it can be a pretty helpful thing. Um, there's mixed data out there about it, um, so you're not, uh, it's, I wouldn't say that it's a landslide evidence in either direction, but I can tell you anecdotally, just from me personally, uh, it's made a big difference in my comfort <laughs> and, uh, and just going and all of that stuff. It's been really, really comfortable. Um, I buy, um, I don't use yogurt or anything like that. You really have to, especially with DS patients or anybody with significant malabsorption, your RNY folks, you're going to want a pretty hefty number of uh, cultures per capsule. I went with 50 billion, which is not the most, but uh, up there. Um, and this is a refrigerated item. Um, and I've been really, really happy with it. Uh, it's definitely made me feel better and made a lot of eating certain things a lot easier. Um, so I, I recommend it. Um, give it a try and see if it helps you too. So that would be, uh, in answer to that question, my top tip for a newbie. When and if you can, get on a probiotic and uh, keep that rolling. Um, uh, somebody asked whether or not I still see myself at a heavier weight. Uh, yeah. I definitely do. You should see me at these consults with plastic surgeons, which is the phase of life I'm entering into now. Um, I'm standing there in front of them and I, I feel like a hot mess. I try to be uh, positive and upbeat about the hard work I've put in and where my body is now and the fact that this is just skin that needs to go. But it is tough. Um, and uh, I kind of thought, hey, once I get to some preset weight, I always thought when I was heavier, this is going to be fantastic. And I'm going to feel so free and the skin's going to be uh, nothing big and, and uh, I'll be able to just live my life and feel like I'm supposed to feel. <laughs> um, and it's not, it hasn't really worked out that way for me. Uh, I have been able to accomplish a lot of my fitness goals. Totally proud of myself for that and very happy with them. Everything, Pilates, running, all the stuff that I work hard on. I love those feelings of strength and peace and yoga does some great stuff for me too. Um, that being said, uh, you know, um, my self image is honestly at least as poor as it was when I was heavier. Um, and I'm working through that. Uh, there's a lot to work through. Um, Part of it is a feeling, and these are just feelings, um, but I'm, I'm going to put them out there. Part of it is a feeling of being pretty un, unfeminine, uh, at least heavier. I felt curvy and, you know, I felt somehow more socially acceptable. Um, now, with my body in the condition that it is, I, I struggle with a lot of feelings um, of looking unnatural. Uh things draping off of me and uh, and uh, a tough time with the way the skin hangs and having to constantly bundle and bind and constrict to wear clothing that fits me because I wear a size medium now and a size 8 pants but there's a lot of skin that has to fit in there but I have to fit it on my waist so I'm constantly dealing with like fake muffin tops and but that are actual, but it's skin and there's nothing I could do about it. And I have to attach the pants to my, my waist. Otherwise they just fall down. So you just sort of live with it. It's not pants that are too tight. They fit uh, or sleeves that because of the amount of, I mean, I have a significant amount of, of spare skin there going a lot with the peasant tops and, and things like that. So I'm more limited in some of the clothing, even though I have so many more options than I did before. So please don't for a minute think that I don't appreciate where I am because I do. Um, but I also have a healthy respect for some of the downsides of where I am right now. Um, it's not forever, but it is, it is for right now. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely, uh, look down sometimes and I'm like, ooh, look at the size of those thighs. And they're nothing compared to what they were, but I see the same size that they were. Um, and the fact that I put on size eight pants feels like somebody's making a mistake. 
and if I were to be honest, that somebody is me, um, but that's not how it feels. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really mixed ride uh, for me. It feels this surreal quality, this giddy quality, um, and then also this uh, out, out of body, not, not so great feeling. Um, and I wrestle with those feelings. They fluctuate day to day, depending on my level of positivity, what I've accomplished that day uh, with fitness and everything else. Um, so it, it varies uh, as it does for everybody, um, I think. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's where I'm at uh, with, with, my, with my weight and how I see myself. Um, what caused my overweight and do I watch carbs? Um, okay, I think, well, I may have covered some of this in an earlier video, but just in case I didn't, and I'll try to be quick about it. Um, I had really severe asthma as a teenager, uh, as an early teen and teenager, and was put on tons and tons of steroids, prednisone, to help me deal with that, along with a number of other medications, methotrexate and Kenalog and really extreme medications because I was being hospitalized for pneumonia very regularly. It was bad news. And uh, so they put me on all these high doses of steroids. I'd get injected steroids. In one year, I actually gained about 100 pounds. Um, so for me, um, you know, other people have skin issues. I have severely compromised skin because my stretch marks, I mean, my skin was traumatized within the scope of a year. I was in no way prepared to gain, you know, to deal with that weight gain um, and uh, in that span of time. So, uh, yeah, that's how I put on the bulk of my weight. Uh, it was medically induced. But then, because I wasn't a big exerciser, partially because of the asthma and partially because of the lifestyle that I had developed um, and being a lazy teenager, which, I mean, was the approach I had taken, um, I kept that weight on. I mean, it wasn't uh, wasn't prednisone forever. It was definitely lifestyle choices. I don't really think there was anything particularly traumatic in my life that led to uh, led to that. But I do think that, like so many people, I used food as a comfort. I used food as a method of celebration, um, as a method of grieving, um, and that. Uh, you know, I just reinforced those habits over and over and over again. Um, and then, in fact, was one of the toughest things coming out of this surgery when you realize that that is not available to you anymore. Um, you never really realized how heavily you lean on that crutch, at least me, uh, until it was not available. I could eat a quarter of a cup and uh, nothing was going to change that. So, uh, and it wasn't the stuff I wanted to eat. So, yeah, uh, that took some doing. Um, but I would say that those were the biggest factors for me. The medicine helped put it on, but I, I definitely kept it on through, my, through the beginning of my 40s with lifestyle choices. Absolutely true. Because the asthma got a lot better, but my fitness didn't uh, until much later in life when I really decided to try to do something about my health um, and started struggling with uh, back pain and all kinds of other stuff. Um, do I watch my carbs? Absolutely, I watch my carbs. Um, I was a really religious user of my fitness pal and still do for tracking weight and, and so forth. Um, but I now know what carbs are in the foods that I eat on an everyday basis. So for the most part, unless I start to see any trend that I don't like in my weight, I probably will not track food in particular. But I read labels and I pretty much keep my carbs at about 100 or so a day. Um, the That's higher than some folks uh, as a DS patient, it, it varies on what your body will tolerate. That's what my body tolerates. Um, and I don't have weight gain with it right now. And uh, I don't have gastrointestinal problems with it right now. So that's what I'm sticking with. If that should change, I will change. Uh, and that's how I'm approaching it. Um, so yeah, thanks for that question. Um, okay, someone asked about what are my game plans for family events and holiday dinners. I got an easy one. First of all, I love to cook. Um, and and uh, I always say, hey, I've got kind of a weird dietary thing going on. I don't even want to hassle you with it at all. I'm sure you're preparing an amazing feast. Is it okay if I bring a little dish um, and I'm happy to set it out for everyone to have some or I'm happy to keep it just for me if, if it ruins your layout? And nine, I've never actually, 10 times out of 10, the people are like, 
like, oh, thank God, I don't have to think or worry about that person. I've got a big group to deal with. They're covering their own food. And then I pick and choose if there's some special items there when I get there that I'd like to have or experience. But for the most part, I've covered my own high protein, low carb arrangement without feeling like a freak. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make me feel like too much of a special snowflake, right? I, I, I bring the dish. I haven't really gotten too many questions about it. Um, and for the most part, when people ask, I just say, I'm eating pretty low carb and everybody goes, oh, and then they kind of move on with their day. And I'm pretty open about my surgery. I'm pretty open with talking about that. But in an environment where that might be TMI, where people are just like, thanks for sharing. Um, I just say I'm going low carb. And most people don't think twice about it because it's such a popular method right now uh, for, for a dietary option. So that's my recommendation. Um, I just think it takes the guesswork out of it. It takes the stress out of it for you. It takes the stress out of it for uh, the host. Um, and you just one quick phone call or text ahead of time covers you. Um, okay, uh, we are getting, we're up to 15 minutes. So I'm going to cut this guy off and I will come back with my other questions to try to get those together for you. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay.